Hello beautiful friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm recovering from a chest infection at the moment, so please excuse my voice. I thought we could do a full face of new beauty today. I have the new Refine Mascara, I have all of the new Huda Beauty lip glosses and some other really exciting bits, so let's get started. I'm going to prep my skin using the Velvet Smooth Pore Refining Primer by Iconic London, which I was sent in PR. This retails for £24 and it comes in a 30ml tube. I'm not a huge primer person to be honest, I don't really tend to use it day to day, but I do like Iconic London ones. I love the packaging and I love that the primer itself is pink. I needed about a quarter of what I squeezed onto my finger for my whole face. I think I would reach for this if I were maybe going to an event and I needed my makeup to last. There's no scent, it's very soft and it does exactly what it says, which is give a velvet finish. I used to absolutely love a matte base, but I'm more of a satin finish person these days. So a primer that isn't getting rid of all of my natural radiance, but keeps my oily t-zone in check is probably what I would go for. Next up is one I've been very curious about. This is by Korean brand Freshian, which was founded in 2022, so a very new brand. I was sent a box of their products, I think it might have been via YesStyle, and this was one of them. It's the egg-like cushion foundation in the shade 201. It's currently down as £21.61 on YesStyle. The compact is so stunning, if it was slightly smaller I probably would have eaten it. The consistency is very thin and creamy and the coverage is amazing for how lightweight the product is. If you watch my shorts you'll know that I tried the tear tear cushion foundation and it oxidised horrendously on me so I was dubious about this one. Especially since one of Freshian's claims for this product is that it doesn't oxidise for 24 hours. And while I have absolutely zero intention of staying up for 24 hours to test it, it at least didn't oxidise in the time I wore it. Freshian markets itself as a very minimalist, no makeup makeup brand, and it feels like this cushion fits into that whole ethos. The foundation has a satin finish which I find always looks most natural, and if I hadn't shown myself putting it on, I'm not sure people would realise I'm wearing makeup. It's thin enough that it doesn't sit in any of my fine lines and just generally evens my skin tone. The first layer mostly covered up the purpley acne scarring on my chin, but I went in with a second layer just in that area. Not because I felt I needed it, I just wanted to see how buildable the product was. And it pretty much completely covered that remaining purple without looking cakey. I haven't seen or heard a single person talking about this brand, but in my opinion they should be. Now for concealer, I'm going to try the Say Beauty Slip Tint Radiant All Over Concealer in the shade 1. The brand very kindly sent me a couple of shades in their latest PR package. I prefer the cool tones of shade 2 for under my eyes, but the colour was a little bit too deep. So I'm going to use shade 1 both on my dark circles and on my chin blemishes. It's far more pigmented than I was expecting, I thought it would be really sheer. You definitely need about half the amount I used. This is very similar to my actual skin tone, so I think it would be really nice if they released a lighter shade, just for brightening the under eye rather than matching it. It's very blendable and it definitely does have a radiant finish. It does have quite a thick consistency and I generally prefer a thinner concealer for under my eyes to prevent creasing so I think it works better on the rest of the face. It blended in so beautifully with the rest of my base, absolutely seamless. It does self set to a degree but it still stays radiant. This concealer retails for £22. I also received this next product in PR, this is the Vive Sunset Blush Balm Luminous Liquid Blush in the shade Rosa. This isn't the sort of blusher shade I'd usually go for, I'm very much a cool toned pink girl. But I hadn't tried any of the Vive liquid blushes and I'd heard that the formula was really nice. And turns out I heard correctly, because it is indeed really nice. It's like a very thin, high pigment gel. It's actually quite similar in texture to the Fret Cheek Slimes. It's one of those products that's just very easy to work with, it's blendable, buildable, and it's pigmented but not so much so that it ends up looking silly on pale skin. As a side note, I still have not managed to make those e.l.f. camo blushes work. Surprisingly, I actually really like the shade, it looks a lot less orange on me than I was expecting. It has a really beautiful luminosity to it as well. I just used my finger to blend it out on my cheeks and added some to the bridge of my nose as well. I definitely squeezed out too much onto my hand but I managed to suck some back in. This retails for £21 and I think it would last absolutely ages. I didn't have any new brow products or a new powder to try so I'm just using my current daily items. I'm setting my cream products with the By Terry Hyaluronic Powder. I probably mentioned it on here a few times now, but it's my current favourite. It sets my makeup without being too mattifying, which I love. I ran out of the baby size I bought last year and thought I might as well go for the big one. The small one is £20 and the big one is £42. Pricey, but in my opinion, absolutely worth it. And then I just did my usual brow routine. I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz in the shade Taupe. I didn't realise I was ordering the new version that doesn't come with a spoolie, so I'm just brushing my brow hairs up using an About Face brow pencil. A lot of brow products are too warm on me, but this shade never fails. 
I stopped using it for a couple of years while I tried other brow products, but I've come straight back. I wouldn't usually layer two blushes on top of each other, but I was also sent the powder version of that same shade Rosa in the Vive PL package. So let's see how they look together. This is the original Sunset blush and it retails for £27. I already have this blusher in another shade so I know it's very pigmented, so I dabbed my brush in and applied it really lightly. I also intensified it on my nose. I think it looks really beautiful. I wanted to see how intense I could make it so I applied a bit more and I definitely started to look a bit sunburnt. And while I wouldn't necessarily go out like this, I don't think it looks bad at all. It was looking a little bit too intense around the apples of my cheeks and I just used my fingers to correct it. I marginally prefer the balm because I love a cream product, but this is beautiful as well. This video is turning into a PR unboxing, isn't it? This next item was also very kindly gifted. This is the Lift and Luminous Baked Highlighter by Iconic London. And as far as I can tell, it only comes in one shade, which is universal. As a very pale individual, I'm always suspicious of complexion products marketed as universal. But I have to say, I am very pleasantly surprised. At least for my skin tone, I think this is stunning which is odd because highlighters that have a pink tint in the pan usually leave a grey cast on me, but nothing. It looks liquid, I'm blown away. The makeup was going so well at this point, I was very dubious about trying this refined mascara. It was £20 and you'll be thrilled to hear I did actually buy this myself. In case you haven't seen previous videos where I talk about mascara, I did actually used to pull my eyelashes out because of anxiety. I still do sometimes, but the ones I pulled out when I was a child never grew back. So my lashes are very thin and sparse and finding mascaras that don't weigh them down or clump them up is very difficult. I curled my lashes and then applied the first coat. The applicator is very unusual, so it does take a bit of getting used to. So far it's lifting and lengthening. I kept on forgetting the wand was shaped like that, so I got some on my eyelid. But I brushed my lashes through a few times, and I actually think it looks really good. Adding more didn't cause clumpiness, it didn't weigh my lashes down, and while they could be more separated, I just don't have very many eyelashes to separate. I love a mascara formula that dries quickly, because it sets straight after application, which is when my lashes are most lifted. And just to test how far I could get with this mascara, I just kept on applying more and more. And all that did was add more volume while keeping the length. This is probably the longest my lashes have ever looked. Hello everyone, it's actually now the following day because I started to lose light, so I have redone all of the makeup so far, and let's continue. Applying the mascara a second time made me realise how much I like it. You might know Queen Cosmetics from their extremely glittery lip glosses, but they also do eyeshadows. This was such an exciting PR parcel to open because historically I have loved every single Queen Cosmetics product I've tried. These Sublime Heart Compacts each hold an eyeshadow. Most of the compacts in the parcel already had an eyeshadow in them, but they left one that I could do myself. Queen Cosmetics does iridescent and monochrome shadows, and both of them fit in these compacts. The one I just popped into the silver compact is the Celestial Being Iridescent Press Shadow and I'm going to try it alongside this yellowy green one, which is called Genesis Duochrome Shadow. Just like the lip glosses, they are extremely pigmented. They are powders, but they're so smooth they kind of feel like cream. And as with most glitter pigments, they apply best with the warmth of your fingers. I don't know why I felt the need to get a blending brush involved, because these are the kinds of pigments that need to be colour blocked, not blended. It's especially the case for Duochrome Shadows like this one. You can kind of see when I look down how that blending distorts the shade. Still absolutely beautiful, but the application does not do it justice. By the way, the compacts are $13.77 each, and each of the individual eyeshadows are $24.78. I'm using a small brush to apply Celestial Being to my inner corners. It's so bright, I have to try this as a highlighter sometime. I blended it into that green duochrome shadow just to get rid of any harsh lines. And just a reminder that I always film in natural sunlight, I don't use any artificial lighting and this is how it looks. Imagine how blinding this eye look would be if I were in artificial or low lighting. As always, I'll list every product I use in order in the description box. I don't believe I've ever tried anything from this next brand. This is Peach Sea, which is Korean. And I'm going to use their brush Fixie Liner in the shade Black Brown. I think brown eyeliner just looks better with this eye look. This was sent to me in PR via Yes Style, and they retail for £4.80 each. The tip of the pen is very thin, and the product itself is really pigmented. I'm generally pretty rubbish at eyeliner, but this made it feel easy. Before moving on to lips, I'm going to set everything in place using the Stila Stay All Day Blurring Setting Spray. This was sent to me in PR and it retails for £28. I don't think I've tried anything from Stila for years. I did a couple of sprays into the air first, but still the first spray onto my skin was quite chunky and you could see the dried blobs on my forehead. After that though, the mist was really fine. It didn't make my skin feel tight at all, I think it actually hydrated and also it smells so nice. 
Now for the lips, I'm going to try every single one of the Huda Beauty glosses, so need to do some prep. This is the new Fenty Beauty Luxe Balm, which was also sent to me in PR. It's described on the packaging as an ultra hydrating cherry lip balm. I do find this lip balm shape makes it quite awkward to apply. Kosas does lip balms in this shape as well, and I think I'd just prefer them if they were round. At first, before the product warms up, it does drag a bit on the lips, but then it becomes really smooth. The cherry scent is really subtle, and it just goes on as a clear balm. It retails for £16, which I think is a bit much. And now to Huda Beauty. This is the PR parcel that the glosses came in. So many of my travel cosmetics cases are from Huda Beauty PR. I'm livid that I didn't use the pounce sticker, it seems so obvious now. These are the new Faux Filler Extra Shine lip glosses. They come in seven shades and they also included six lip liners in the parcel. These glosses retail for £17.50 each. The lip liners are called the Lip Contour 2.0 and they retail for £19. First I'm lining my lips with the lip contour in the shade Terracotta. The first gloss I'm trying is warm tone so I thought this would go well. For a liner called Terracotta though, it's actually more cool tone than I was expecting. It's actually quite pink on me but I thought I'd use this as a test to see how pigmented the glosses are. Gloss shade number one is Honey. I really like the packaging, I love the bubble font and I think the glosses themselves feel nice and robust. The applicate is quite difficult to get out so be wary of any product spilling anywhere. The applicate is quite chunky and triangular, which I do think is helpful in applying the product neatly, especially in the inner corners. I really like the colour of this first gloss and it covered up the lip liner beautifully. The applicator holds a lot of product so I think it would be easy to over apply. These glosses contain all sorts of hydrating ingredients like vitamin E and some melted waxes, and the idea is that they'll hydrate your lips enough to plump them up and make it look like you have filler. The formula is very creamy and rich and it definitely does give a nice pillowy effect. Shade number two is Foxy, which I paired with that same lip liner. This is a deeper, cool-toned brownie red, much better suited to the liner shade. Again, nice and pigmented, I think this is a stunning universal shade. There are a few nice pinks in the collection, so I'm lining my lips with deep rose. It's a pinky maroon shade that I think would complement them well. This lip liner formula is quite creamy, by the way, so you can blend the glosses into it. Shade number three is Sugar Baby, which is this light pink. Because I'm so pale, I don't like using lip glosses that are too light but a deeper lip liner usually helps add some definition. I actually love this combination. It does look a little bit alarming at first, but after some blending, I think this is the perfect 90s style lip. This lip gloss shade is also surprisingly pigmented. Shade number four is Bombshell, which I'm pairing with that same deep rose liner. I think the pairing is perfect again, and this lip gloss shade is so beautiful. This is another shade I think would be universal. This specific shade of pinky red looks so beautiful in a glossy formula. There's no stickiness or gloopiness with these glosses, and needless to say, this is another high pigment shade. Shade number five is called Posh, which is quite similar to the last one. It's a bit more maroon though. It's also slightly less pigmented than the ones I've tried so far. Pretty, but I don't think I would choose it over Bombshell. Then I was preparing to put on another liner and thought I'd test out Glossy, which is a clear shade. This is shade number six out of seven. It's a nice clear gloss and it has all the hydrating properties of the other ones, but I'm not sure I would spend £17.50 on a clear gloss. It is particularly shiny, which is nice, and it does last a while on the lips. So if you're looking for a very low maintenance, very high shine clear gloss, then this could be it. And finally, I'm lining my lips with the lip contour in the shade Rich Brown. This is neutral leaning cool on me, which is perfect for the gloss we're about to try. Number 7 out of 7 is called Coco. This is the deepest shade in the collection and I was a bit disappointed. It would be a beautiful vampy shade if it weren't so patchy, which is strange because the other ones are so opaque and pigmented. I tried applying more and while it didn't make it go clumpy, it also didn't really help. I'm thinking maybe this would look less patchy on someone with a deeper lip tone to begin with. At least for my skin tone though, I would stick to the lighter shades. And we are done with our full face of new beauty. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it. Standout products for me are the Freshly and Cushion Foundation, the Iconic London Highlighter, the Refi Lash Sculpt and the Queen Cosmetics Eyeshadows. I also love Honey, Sugar Baby and Bombshell in the Huda Beauty Faux Filler Glosses. As I mentioned, everything will be linked in the description box. Ooh.